Come on now. He can see. Praise the name of Jesus. Tell somebody that this God can see. He knows what we are going through. Nalena is our ruler. You can't take a rope and hang yourself because of eggs. Hallelujah. You know, if you are a child of a king, you don't even worry. I was speaking to one of my sons. I said, hey, you can't eat five eggs while there are no eggs. There's a problem of eggs, but he's preparing five eggs. <laughs> because he wants to gain, you know, I need to now they're exercising and all that. And now, you know, he's preparing. He does not, he does not mind five eggs. But at the same time, I'm saying to myself, he does not worry that because he knows he has a daddy. I think that is the same attitude that we must have, Bazalwan. He, he is not worried about that because he knows he has a daddy. Let us take the same attitude to our father and say it does not matter the circumstances because I have a daddy. He will take care of that. He did not even answer when I said, why five eggs? He did not even answer. But in the inside of him, it's like we're saying, you are my father. You're going to look after that. You will take care of that. Come on, come on, give God praise. And say he's going to take care of it. Amen. So we are a church that understands that things are not good. Pastor Juan. And then we cannot be naive and we cannot act as if we don't know. Now, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. Is there any man here who is not working? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I know it's very difficult for you at this present moment. Any man who's not working, stand on your feet. You are a man. You are not working. Stand on your feet. Praise the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for this man in the name of Jesus. I know it's not easy in this season. I speak your grace. I speak your favor. I speak your anointing. In Jesus' name, do them good, O oh Father. Grace them, open doors, strengthen them, especially in this season. In the name of Jesus, Amen. 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 Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. I want, ushers, I want you to bless this man with our conference ticket. want to bless you with our conference ticket. Just give them a conference ticket. want to give you a conference ticket. It's a gift to you. We want you to attend the conference. We're also going to be addressing some issues pertaining you as a man. Is that okay? So we are blessing you. So if you've got a commitment, we want you to give that ticket to somebody because we want you to be a part of this conference from Thursday. Hallelujah. Okay. So please, just before you go and then just... Go to the information desk and give us your number so that we can communicate with you. But this is the ticket that will give you an access on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you're not making it, make sure But you've got this ticket all the way. Is that okay? God bless you. We love you. If you've already registered, give that ticket to somebody out there who's not registered. We want to bless you. Is that okay? God bless you. Amen. <laughs> quickly, quickly, quickly before we minister the word. To the ladies who are here in this church, you are a member of this church, you've got a husband and hope who is not working. You want us to bless him with a ticket. Is there anybody who wants us to bless with a ticket? Probably you want us to bless them with a ticket. Stand on your feet wherever you are. You can be a, a member here. Maybe the husband is not working and then you want him. And, and, and even sons, by the way, not only married, a married men, but even sons. You've got a son who is matured. You want them to come to the conference. Raise your hand wherever you are. We're going to bless you with a ticket. I'm not talking about somebody who's well doing. You, everything is fine. So if you need <laughs> Jesus, how? People who are, you know you cannot afford. Raise your hand quickly before we minister the word. Unfortunately, guys online, I can't give you the ticket. I can't give you the ticket. But you can reach, but you can reach, reach out to the office. God bless you. Is that okay? Is that okay? 
praise the name of Jesus. And I, I still I can still give another 10. And if you've got a neighbor, you know that he needs to come to the conference, see us, go in for desk, or Pastor Ashley will be there and will be a blessing to you. Come on, let's give God praise. Thank you, ushers, in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you good this morning? Are you good this morning? I encourage you, Pastor Rani, take 8 o'clock service. It's hot. It is much better to be good 8 o'clock service. I wonder the guys... Seven o'clock, how are they going to handle this 11 o'clock? So you better come 8 o'clock, encourage others to come in for 8 o'clock service. Amen. Now we're going to minister the word. I know the last time I stood here, I promised you that we're going to talk about purpose to posterity, but we are in a new month, you know, where we're talking about gaining ground. We're going to shelve that one. We're going to do it another day, my dear sir. I know you wanted me to do that sermon. Praise the name of Jesus. But we are talking about gaining ground ground, gaining ground, and we thank God for Pastor Mtetwa, who was here last Sunday, hallelujah, he ministered so well, and he opened the topic for us, gaining ground, and he mentioned that gaining ground simply means to advance, it also means to pick up speed, accelerate, and overtake, and not only that, gaining ground also means shape up and dominate, to make progress, to forge ahead, that is the meaning, you know, of gaining ground. Now, the phrase, I need to go further and to say the phrase gain ground is often used in the battlefield. Those of you who have watched, you know, those movies where there's a battle, they use that word, you know, gain ground, you know. And then the army, if it's losing the battle, they will say we are losing ground. And if they are winning, they are saying, we are gaining ground. Are you with me? Now, the phrase is also used in political and economic world. You know, if an ideal gradually becomes strong, more widely known, or more popular, we say the ideal is gaining ground. Because it was in, in another space you know, where it was not known. Just as that tractor, it's moving in a place that was not, you know, uh, cultivated. So that is what we are talking about, that we need to gain ground. But I want to take it further and, and, and come from a different angle this morning. Instead of talking about gaining ground, I want to talk about regaining lost ground. Amen. Are you with me, Bazalwan? Because saying gaining ground, it's a different story. But I want to talk about the ground that we have lost because we were given ground. But somewhere, somehow, we lost the ground. So when I'm saying to you, regain the ground, I'm saying, you know, to get Again, to get that thing that was given unto you. To get again something you have lost. We are sitting here, there are things that we have lost. And to make up for lost time. That is what I am talking about this morning. But I need to say, beloved, making up for lost ground is never easy. Or should I say... You know, making up for lost ground, it's not going to be an easy journey. Maybe I need to give an example. For an example, for a soccer team that has fall behind, it's not going to be easy for, for it to gain ground. For business that has suffered bankruptcy, it's not going to be easy for them to gain ground. Can I go further? For a couple whose marriage has suffered infidelity, it's not going to be easy, you know, to gain ground. Yes, it is possible, but you need to know it's going to cost you something. You had something and something came in and you lost ground and for you to win or to gain that ground, it's going to challenge you, it's going to be a challenge. For a man who has lost his employment to gain ground and to be where you were supposed to be 
at this time, you know, or next year at this time, surely it's not going to be an easy thing. Or should I say, to gain ground for a pensioner who failed to save while he or she was young. Now, it, it's getting deep now. You understand? At the age of 70, you want to start saving. It's not going to be easy. For an addict who wants to recover, you have lost so much ground. And for you to recover, it's not going to be easy. Or should I say for a country that suffered maladministration, how is that country going to gain ground? Catching up, Bazalwani, is hard to do. Ask me. I know. The five years of missing school, I can still feel its impact. Being taught to read at the age of 15, because there was a moment I didn't go to school. You can still feel its impact. You are gaining ground, but you feel, I lost ground somewhere. It's not going to be easy. I wonder as a nation, how long will it take to have a stable country? A strong rent. A sufficient electricity for all. To lower the price of petrol. The eggs. The list is bottomless. It's not going to be easy. It will be painful. But you need. Now we've got water shading. Bar. For things to change. You need somebody. To have guts. When I was in metric. With Pindi, at the same time when I was in metric, one of my knees, Uzanele, she was in grade, standard six, grade eight. She was 13. My sister will give me money for the lunchbox so that I should keep it for her as well. Remember, I'm 22, metric. She will come to my class. Gumetric, uh, and she will shout, Malume! <laughs> Malume! <laughs> I thought I would get the picture here. I, I, I was trying to get the picture, you know, of her, and uh, I, in my, my album, I could not get it. She will shout, Malume! Mdali Mali! And Pindi and the other kids in the class said, Malume, niggas umdana imali. Malume, niggas umdana imali. I'm glad you are laughing about it. We're still talking about regaining lost ground. Now, I want you to turn in your Bible or whatever in the book of Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8. And just before we read, before you project that, Opa, I want to give you a background of this story. You know that in Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites, under the leadership of Joshua, they've experienced a great victory. You remember? Facing the walls of Jericho, and then they, they conquered Jericho. And there was a great, great, great victory. And in chapter 7, things begin to change. God said when you conquer Jericho, whatever you're going to collect there, nobody must take things for themselves, 
but it must be given to, to the kingdom. It must be stored in God's temple. Whatever the gold that is there, whatever something of value, nobody must take it for themselves. And the, the, the victory was so great. In chapter 7, these guys, they experience, or should I say, they lose ground in a painful way. Because a man in the camp by the name of Achan committed sin. And he took things that did not belong to him. He took some things that belonged to the temple when, when they conquered Jericho. And let me tell you, they suffered a great, a great, or, or they, they lost a, a ground because somebody disobeyed and he sinned against God. To a point that when they had to go to battle, they were defeated. And Joshua came back and then he wanted to find out, Lord, what is it that we have done wrong? And God said to, to him, you have lost ground. There is somebody in the camp who have sinned. Because of him, many people have died in the battle. You know, because somebody in the midst of the crowd has done something wrong and they lost ground. So we pick up the story in the book of Joshua chapter 8 where they want to gain ground, and God says to them, you need to regain ground. As much as you had ground, but you need to regain ground, and he's telling them what to do. In chapter 8, from verse 1, that is where we read, And but when you get home, you can read the entire scripture and see how they've conquered. In verse 1, it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Okay? Can I also say that to somebody this morning, we have lost ground. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged that you have lost ground. Take the whole army with you. One translation, it says, take the people of war, all the people of war with you. And it says, and go up and attack AI. That's how you translate. My, my wife said I must pronounce it like this. It's AI, eh? I, I don't know. Or whatever the school you're coming from. So, for I have delivered... Into your hands, the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. My goodness me. Except that you may carry off their plunder and leave stock, livestock for yourselves. Can you see now God is telling them something different. And the livestock for yourself. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night. The best of his fighting men. You don't take ordinary men if you want to you wanna win ground. You don't do things ordinary if you want to win ground. You're not going to take it for granted. You're going to take all the weapons. If you want to gain ground again, if you want to be where God placed you before, it's not going to be easy. You have to give the best. You, have, you must give your best. You must give your, your, your whole energy, your whole strength. Take every resources to make sure that you win the battle. It's not going to be easy to fight for your marriage. If you want your marriage back, you want your relationship back, you must give the best. You're not going to be kind. You're not going to be casual to win this battle. If you want to win this battle, Hope Restoration Ministries, I want to say to you, if you want to win this battle, I don't know what is it that you are facing. I don't know the battle that you are facing, but I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to regain, you know, ground this morning, you must give the best. You must do something that you have never done before. You must take the resources that you have never used before. You must take the reserves that you have never used before big because this is not going to be a child's thing. This is a war. Yeah. South Africa is no longer the same. It's no longer the same South Africa. Ayaga 19 or Ayaga 2022. It's no longer the same. Are you with me, child of God? But I think before we even talk about how to gain ground, let us identify the things that makes us to lose ground. We know that in this story, it was the sin of Achan. That Achan sinned. And the Israelites lost ground. But 
here, let us make it, let us bring it home. As God's people, what are the things that makes us to lose ground? In life in general. Number one, here's the first one. A sense of achievement. Hallelujah. Number one, a sense of achievement. Or should I say camping in your past success. That can make you lose ground. Maltzman Ross said these words one day. He says, the greatest enemy of progress is your last success. People, they lose ground because of their previous success. I don't know what made sundowns to lose yesterday, but um, <laughs> you can connect that to the past success. Because when you are successful, you don't train. <laughs> Sorry, my Sunday one. You don't train the way you used to. Somebody who is a champion, who has the belt, the, the training, yeah, okay, it is not the same compared to the one who wants the belt. The one who is hungry does not train like a champion. The one who has not tested success does not train like the one who has tested the success. So sometimes our success becomes our downfall. Are you with me? And then number two, here's another cause for how we lose ground and then disobedience. And let me put it nicely, or let me just put it straight to you. Sin. Sin can make you lose ground. We, we, we cannot sugarcoat this. It's so no one. When you have an extramarital affair, you're going to lose ground. Um jolo, u costly. Yes, I patan, uza tiza, uzu pumim banja. Because um jolo xion jokta. Look at the person next to you. Like u kuni silo lebab. You will lose ground. Nimzula basalo. Stay away from sin. Stay away from that. And then number three, not walking in your purpose. Or should I say not doing you, trying to be somebody else, you're going to lose ground. If you are living life out of God's alignment or out of God's purpose, you're going to lose ground. Every day when you try to be something else, try to be something that you are not, you're going to lose ground because there's no grace in that thing. You are not grace for that. The moment you try to be something that you are not, you are losing ground. Every day of your life, you are losing ground because you are not where God wants you to be. You are losing ground. Make sure you are in God's purpose. Does not matter how painful it is. Fear of failure. It is number four. Lack of economical understanding. If you don't know how money works, you're going to lose ground. If you don't know how money works, there are people, the moment they've got money, they feel now I must go for shopping. They feel now I must go do something. The moment you have an extra money, where now you want to upgrade, you want to buy a new car. The moment you get a promotion, it's like my money. There are people who are just allergic to money. They're just allergic to money. They don't want to be with money. It's like, ah, I can't tell me the 10,000. You know, so now you're looking, well, where can I go spend? Because you don't understand. You get sick that you've got money. Some of you, Hingag, in the Why are you laughing? He ate in the But the salary, it's gone. Because we, nobody taught us how to handle finances. That is why the Bible says the world of the stingy grows smaller and smaller. But the world of the generous grows larger and larger. When it says the world of the generous, it doesn't just say the world of those who just give money like that. 
You must also give answers like that. When people come to you and sell you things, you, you must be generous with your answer. Say no. You are generous with your opinion. You are saying, this is not going to work for me. You are generous with honesty. I don't need it now. But when... Ignorance makes us to lose ground. Incompetency, I cannot spend much time on that one. Not having the skill to do something. And here is another one that I've picked up over the, year, the years. When you stop learning, when you stop learning, you're going to lose ground. Look at the verse. Proverbs 19.27 Little my child, when you stop learning, you will soon neglect what you already know. Did you hear what the scripture says? When you stop learning, when you are no longer teachable, you come to the house of the Lord, but you are no longer teachable. Even what you know, you will lose it. People, they lose ground. You are telling somebody, you don't speak to your husband like that. But because you are not teachable, you lose everything. You even lose the beauty. Because you don't listen. Because you have Lost one thing. If there's a woman married next to you, say, I hope he's not talking to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is this a good stuff, Bazalwan? Is this a good stuff? But remember, we've got an assignment this morning. Our assignment, it is simple. We want to regain lost ground. How do I regain this lost ground. I'm glad you have asked that question. Number one, are you ready? Can we get into business this morning? How to regain lost ground? Hallelujah. Number one, fear not. Look at the person next to you and say, fear not. Fear not. Courage, step out in faith. Courage, step out in faith remains starting or remains the starting point. Courage to step out in faith remains the starting point. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you are a person of courage, that is how things will begin in your life. Get rid of fear. Or should I say, everything that you want is on the other side of fear. The ground that you have lost is on the other side of fear. That is why God comes to Joshua. He says to him, Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Hope Restoration Ministries, my message is simple this morning. As much as you have lost ground, my dear, I don't know where, in every area of your life. Yes, you have lost ground. You have lost ground, but the most important thing is that you can still regain that ground. Some of us is going to take us time. Some of us going to be six months, going to be a year, it's going to be five years. But listen to me, your, your ground is still available. It's on the other side of fear. If you can conquer fear, you can gain ground. You can gain ground. It does not matter how long we have lost that ground. I've just shared my story. If I did not conquer fear, I don't think I'll be standing right here. I would have said when I was in matric, I would have said, you know what, let me just forget about this thing. But I had to soldier on and deal with my fear and deal with my discouragement. I mean, it was not easy. Forgive you. Now, Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine the whole class call you Malume? Malume, Malume. 
I mean, there was this young man by the name of Ruben. I don't know who is Ruben. Mshambe Ruben, you are watching on television. From nowhere, he will just say, Hey, Malum, I'm going to get Paul Oh, really? And if you are not smart, you would actually be discouraged. There are things that will come your way to discourage you. I'm saying to you, your ground is on the other side of fear. And then my point is that fear not. Come on, give somebody a high five and say fear not. Fear not in the name of Jesus. Number two. If you are going to gain ground, you need to participate corporately. You need to participate corporately. Working with others is a key for you to gain ground. Don't do life alone. Do you hear what I'm saying, Basalwa? Don't do life alone. Listen on that verse, verse one. God says to Joshua, take the whole army with you. Take the whole people of war. I love it with that translation. It says, take all the people of war with you. You don't do war alone, my dear. You cannot do life alone. When you have lost ground, you need other people to stand side by you, to stand next to you, so that you can win ground. You need somebody to walk this journey with you so that you can win ground. Yes, you have lost ground alone, but you cannot recover this ground alone. That is why we come to church every Sunday to say, Father God, we are here. We need your grace. We are better and stronger to, together. How can one, you know, walk alone. How can you get warm alone? But if you are two, you are better than one. One can chase 1,000, but two can chase 10,000. You need to be an army. You need to be among other people. Don't be a loner. Don't be a loner. The devil knows how to destroy us. He will separate you from those who love you. Isolate you so that you can be alone. Like a prodigal son, he knew that if he's alone, he cannot recover. But at the end of the day, how did the prodigal recover? When he decided to go back home and his father accepted him. And then his father was able, you know, to, to work with him so that he can regain ground. So don't do life alone. And then number two, number two, how to regain lost ground. You know, be active, not passive. Be active, not passive. Somebody put it in a beautiful way. Uti somebody here. O William Blake. Uti active evil is better than passive good. Really? Active evil is better than passive good. Because somebody who is active in public or who is evil in public, you are even able to help them. Are you with me? But the one who is passive in his goodness, how do we benefit from that? How do we benefit from your goodness and then we don't even know that you are good because you are passive. My point here is simple. Based on that scripture, God says to Joshua, go up and attack we cannot be passive, praying and waiting. You see, hope restoration, or should I say, South Africa, we are in this mess because we have been passive for too long. We have been passive for too long. Only in South Africa, the middle class and the rich people are so comfortable in their suburbs that they are being led by those who are not educated. And we are so comfortable. And the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, I have seen something strange on earth. He says, I have seen something strange on earth. He says, the kings and the princesses and the queens, they are on barefoot. They are walking. Yet the slaves are riding horses. And it's like the prince and the kings, they are so comfortable that we are kings, we are walking. And look at the slaves are, are riding. 
That is why we are in this mess. Because we have been so passive. Utulisa, utulisa, naba fundis, utufundis. Shalagule niyako. Tula, tula utitu. Unga kulu mega anje mfundis. Shale vangelin. Utu watumu yo shuma eli vangel. Mi vangel ganti in, pasal. Hilo lele mchela lo. Mi vangel, hilo lele. Hello, you cannot be passive. You need to be active. And God comes to this guy. He says, go up. As much as I can win this battle, but you need to go up. And do what? And attack. You need to go up and attack. And thereafter, he says, this time, you're going to change the strategy. You're going to change the strategy. The, the principle is still the same, but we're going to change the strategy. Listen to what he says. He says, for I have delivered unto you, unto your hands, okay? Look at the sequence. The king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. Oh my goodness me. I pray that may the good God give us revelation here. You know, there are things, when you speak of a king, you are speaking of authority. There are things that have taken authority in your life. What is it that is ruling over your life? What is it that has taken kingship? What is it that has taken the throne of God in your life? Because if you want to gain ground, you deal with the king of the place. You, gain, you deal with the thing that is dominating. Now God says the first thing that you must do, you take the king. You take his people, those who are surrounding him. You take the city and you don't leave the land because the land it is the one that is going to produce. Now to me next time, Bazan, we're going to talk about this thing. Gaining the land, we also come to a place where we know how to handle our finances because we are good in taking authority in the spiritual realm. But we don't know how to work the land. We are spiritually empowered. But when it comes to dealing with the land, we are not empowered there. That is why, Bazalwano, we are good in prayer, we are good in preaching, but we are still poor. Because we have taken down the king. We have taken down the people. But we have not taken the city. We have not taken the land. It's a topic for another day. The strategy has to change. For you to gain ground, you may need, I suggest to you, you may need to look at this strategy. But we're going to come back to that some other time. Maybe as the part two. But number five, don't repeat the same mistake twice. Did you hear what I said? Don't repeat the same mistake twice. Do you want to gain? Gain ground, learn. What is it that has made you to be where you are? Learn from that. Don't repeat the same mistake twice. So all those things are primary. Or should I say they are secondary? There are three things that I strongly believe. Before you gain ground in all these areas, here is also your responsibility to yourself. Because we sometimes want to go out and gain ground. Yet there are things that we need to do to ourselves. Number one, you need to gain ground of your mind. Did you hear what I said? Gain ground of your mind. Your mind is a battlefield. Or should I say your mind is a battleground. Battles are lost or won in the mind. The devil plays with your game right here. So take charge of your mind. Are you with me, child of God? Take charge of your mind. That is, a, that is something that I want you to do. If you are going to gain ground, make sure that your mind is empowered. Make sure that your mind is rich. Make sure that your mind it is back. Collect your mind. For the Bible says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
If you think you are a loser, you have lost the battle. But if you think you are a winner, you have won the battle. Because the battle is the winner. If somebody has told you that you are good for nothing, you need to collect your mind. Gain ground in your mind. Collect your mind that has been scattered all over. You know, because of the, 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 the words that has been spoken unto you. You need to collect your mind so that you can gain ground. You can never gain ground if your mind is still doubtful. Amen. And then number two, you need to collect your spirit. I'm not sure if I'm making, I'm putting it right. But collect your, your spirit or, or, or gain ground in your spirit. Your spirit is your navigating system to gain ground. If you are not together in your spirit, if your spirit is scattered, the devil has tempered with your spirit man. You cannot gain ground. Listen what Job says. This is very important. I know my time is almost up. This is very important. Listen what Job says. Job says, but there is a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding and intelligence. One translation says intelligence. Your spirit man, Mdagama, is the one that gives you guidance. You cannot live Life, yet in the inside, you are dead. If you are dead in the inside, we're going to be shocked tomorrow. Because something has tampered with your spirit. I nearly jumped on this girl yesterday. I'm telling you, it's But at the end of the day, I had told myself, I said, you know what? There's a confusion in the spirit man. Are you with me? Gain ground in your spirit. And the last one as we pray. You need to gain ground in your physical body. Listen to this. Your body is your horse to carry you into your destiny. Did you hear what I said? Your body is your horse to carry you into your destiny. Many people, they want to gain ground. Want to gain ground. You want to fight these battles. But look at your body. It's so weak. Look at your body. It's tired. You have not nursed your body. You have not looked after your body. And yet you want to get into the battle of winning ground. Gaining ground, Mazalwan, is going to need you with a sharp mind. Gaining ground is going to need you with a good spirit, intact spirit in the inside. And gaining ground is going to need you with a strong body. When Paul says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, he was said, saying to us, you need your mind to be intact. You need your spirit to be in the right place. You need your body to function in a normal way. Because this, as much as it's not a physical battle, but it's going to need your physical strength. It's going to need your spiritual strength. It's going to need your mind at the best level of thinking so that you take right decision to deal with all these things. Collect yourself and thereafter gain ground in these areas. So the big question is, how are you this morning? How's your spirit man? Stand on your feet, please. I want us to make an introspection this morning. I want you to make an introspection. What have you lost this morning? What have you lost? What have you lost? Oh, Libo Shiketelebebe. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Gubobo Gewotiku. 
Mama Tebula, I'm going to ask you to come and pray. Maybe we're going to start here. You are here this morning. You are saying, I have lost ground. I have lost ground of my faith. Maybe I have lost ground as a father. I have lost ground as a mother. I have lost ground in this area. I want to regain ground this morning. I don't know what is it. Mama Tebula will be here to pray with us. In the name of Jesus. Goodbye. But if you need prayer, if you need prayer, just come right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. of the Lord has convicted us on something. And as we are doing that, you know, introspection, the Lord has pointed at some of the things that we can do better on. And I am standing here to say we need the grace of the Lord. For it is His grace that causes us to do His will. It is God working in us. So as much as we are going to pray for these ones who, are, who have come up front to to receive prayer, I want us to stretch out our hands to the heavens to say, Father, we need you. Those of us who are there, you know, on the floor, we just need to stretch forth our hands as we are praying for these, these ones. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Father, I need you. The Bible says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I believe these are the last days wherein God is sending out help. He's pouring out his help upon us as the church. And as we are praying, I want us to say, Father, we are receiving of your spirit. We are receiving of the divine help. We are receiving of your grace. We are receiving of your anointing. We are receiving of your power, the power from on high. For we believe you are in this place to assist us, to help us so that we can fulfill your purposes. And I want us to pray with sincerity of heart for we understand unless the Lord helps us, there is nothing that we can do. Father, we have lost ground. Can we begin to pray? We have lost ground, oh God. Even this morning, our eyes are on you. We stand and we declare some trust in chariots. Others, they trust in horses. But our hope is in you, oh God. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. David says, when my soul is overwhelmed within me, you know what I am supposed to do. That is why we cry out to you. Have mercy. Have mercy 
upon us. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. For I understand, my Father, that you are help and ever present help in trouble, O oh God. That's why we cry out to you as your church and we say, Send, send your spirit, O oh God. Pour out your spirit upon us all, even this morning, so that we may begin to see as we are supposed to see, so that we may understand the way how we're supposed to live, so that, my Father, we may grasp even the things that you are doing, that we may begin to see the invisible, that we may begin to hear, O oh God, the unheard, what others miss, we pray, may your spirit give us that divine advantage. We stand and we say we need you. We need you in our families. We need you in our marriages. We need you in our employment. We need you, oh God. We need you, my Father, in our parenting. That those who are your children are led by your spirit. And even this morning, with our hands stretched out to you, we declare not by might, neither by power, but by your spirit, we shall fulfill your purposes. It will only ask us that many other plans in a man's heart, but it is your purpose that will prevail. Your purpose prevails. Thank you that our minds are renewed that our hearts are steadfast, that we have confidence in you, O oh God. That is why we leave this place encouraged. We live strengthened. We live, O oh God, with that mandate, understanding the times that we are living in just like the sons of Issachar. That is why we release that spirit upon us all. The spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit, oh God, of discernment, that we may know that which we are supposed to do. In this season, that is difficult. That we may hear the voice of your spirit. For we believe there are so many voices that are clamoring for our attention. But my God, this morning, see a colleague, Masagu, Zuemo, Ingwell, call me Sarah name, Pilosetu, Israel, call it your flock, your sheep. Know your voice. And a stranger will they not follow. And that's what we are declaring upon us all, even as we leave this place. In the name of Jesus, we declare. And the church of Jesus said, Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming in the house of the Lord. Just like we have said, Church of Jesus, the just shall live by faith. And it is now that our faith should be beautiful, that our faith should shine, that our faith should glisten. Indeed, those are the children of God. Because these tough times are an opportunity for our faith to stand out. So, do not be dismayed. Do not be afraid. God is with you. God is for you. Therefore, keep strong. Stay strong. Keep believing. Keep doing the will of the Lord. At the proper time, the Lord will come through for you.